When working in accounting or finance or accounts payable or payment, the terms balance sheet and income statement are bandied about quite frequently. The people using them assume you understand the difference, but do you? Let's take a look at what each is and how they are used and some common interactions. Make sure you stick around until the end when we discuss the one big error that can cause problems on both the balance sheet and the income statement. Let's start with the balance sheet. What is the balance sheet for starters? A balance sheet is a financial statement that reports the company's assets, liabilities, and shareholders or owner's equity at any specific point in time. A balance sheet provides a snapshot of what a company owns and owes, as well as the amounts invested by shareholders at a particular point in time, usually the end of the fiscal year or some other fiscal period, either monthly or quarterly or whatever. You may hear some discussion about a balance sheet equation. In those cases, the speaker is usually referring to the basic equation that states assets equals liability plus owner's equity. Occasionally, you will see this equation in another form. Specifically, liabilities equal assets minus owner's equity. You will sometimes see owner's equity referred to as shareholders equity. How is the balance sheet used? There are several ways the balance sheet is used depending on who is doing the looking. Internally, the management team will look at the balance sheet to monitor the health of the organization. They will use this information then to drive activity, hoping to correct mistakes early before they cause too much of a problem. And they do the opposite when there's a success. Investors and lenders look at the balance sheet when determining whether to invest or lend, using it to determine profitability and more importantly, at least to the lenders, liquidity, i.e. will the organization have the adequate funds to service loans and more specifically any new loans that they may make to an organization. An investor, especially one considering buying company stock, will be interested to see if there is adequate liquidity to continue paying dividends. Using the balance sheet, let's take a look at some of the basic analytical comparisons typically made based on data from the balance sheet. We're going to start with the current ratio. This measures the liquidity of the organization and its ability to meet its short-term obligation. It is calculated by taking current assets and dividing them by current liabilities. In an ideal world, the resulting number would be greater than one. But even for some well-known companies, it is often below one. The following are considered current assets, cash and cash equivalents, inventory, accounts receivable, and any other assets that can be converted into cash within one year. The following are considered current liabilities, accounts payable, short-term debt, and the current portion of long-term debt. Next, we're going to look at the quick ratio. This measures the organization's ability to pay off its current liabilities using its liquid assets. It is calculated by dividing quick assets by current liability. What's a quick asset? Cash and cash equivalents, accounts receivable, and other short-term assets. Likewise, current liabilities are the same as used in calculating the current ratio. Basically, the quick ratio removes inventory and the disposal of the inventory from the equations. There are many reasons for this, many of which you probably figured out yourself. Yeah. The balance sheet is always based on the past. It says nothing about the future. That's why you will frequently see a warning for investors stating that past performance is no guarantee of future performance or success. Now let's talk about the accounts payable connect. Current liabilities are considered any obligation due within one year. Hence, Accounts payable will be included in the current liabilities figure, along with things like rent, payroll, etc. Now let's turn our attention to the income statement. Why does an income statement? One of the easiest ways to remember what an income statement is, I think, is that to think of it as a profit and loss statement. Income statement, profit and loss statement. Specifically, it reports on the revenue, expenses, gains, and losses for the reporting company for a specific period of time. The most common periods of time are the fiscal year, which may or may not be the same as the calendar year or quarterly statements. It focuses on four separate areas, revenue, expenses, gains, and losses. Although, of course, everyone is hoping that there will only be three due to having no losses. How is the income statement used? For starters, business owners can use the income statement to see if their plans and investments have paid off. It also helps them identify any unplanned for expense. Lenders will use the income statement to decide whether the business is loan worthy, while investors will use it to determine if it meets their investment criteria. Creditors 
use the income statement to check whether the company has enough cash flow to pay for goods that it might order from them, pay off its loans, or take out a new loan. Now let's take a look at some of the basic analysis typically made based on data from the income statement. There are two types of analysis commonly used with income statement, a vertical analysis and a horizontal analysis. Let's take a look at each. With a vertical analysis, each line item in the statement is listed as a percentage of the base amount. So light line items on the income statement are now expressed as percentages of gross sales rather than the precise dollar amount. Vertical analysis makes it simpler to compare financial statements between companies across industries and time periods. You can use it to assess whether performance indicators are getting better or worse. Conversely, horizontal analysis compares changes in the dollar amounts in the company's financial statements over multiple periods. While it is usually used in absolute comparisons, it can be used as percentages. The horizontal analysis makes financial data and reporting consistent per generally accepted accounting principles, otherwise known as GAAP. There is sometimes a debate over which approach is better. The answer is simple. Combining both will give you the insights you need to make whatever decisions and analysis are employed. Now let's look at the accounts payable connection. Accounts payable per se does not show up on the income statement. However, they are closely related, if you will, as the income statement shows expenses. Now, before we discuss how the balance sheet and income statement are related, and they are, if you are getting value from this discussion, both YouTube and I would appreciate it if you'd hit the like or the thumbs up button to let us know so that YouTube can share it with more people and I can know to create more content like this. A big thank you from me to everyone who did so. I appreciate your insight. How are the balance sheet and income statement related and interconnected? Obviously, they both help both internal and external parties evaluate the financial health of the company in question. They complement each other in presenting a clear picture and understanding of the financial operations of a company. But there is even a closer tie. Remember that balance sheet equation discussed earlier? Assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. They kind of beat it into your head in business school, but I digress over that. Profits generated in the income statement get added to the owner's equity on the balance sheet as retained earnings. Also, debt on the balance sheet is used to calculate interest expense in the income statement. The simple way to remember the difference between the quick ratio and the current ratio is that the quick ratio focuses on items that can be converted to cash quickly. When speaking the language of accounting, current always means less than a year. Hence the use of the term current ratio when discussing assets and liabilities of less than one year. I have a little balance sheet and income statement trivia for you, unless you already know that. In which case, please feel, feel free to let us know in the comments. But I'll bet most of you don't know who created the first balance sheet and who created the first income statement. I'll give you a hint. He was also a mathematician. No, it was not Leonardo da Vinci, although he was a good friend. It was Friar Luca, Luca Bartolomeo de Pacchioli. I had to practice that. Yes, that's right, he was a friar. He described the double entry accounting method used in parts of Italy in 1494. Yes, you heard correctly. This revolutionized how business oversaw their operations and is still in use over 500 years later. He is considered the father of modern accounting. By the way, the income statement and balance sheet are complemented by the statement of cash flow. We did another video on the basics of that statement, which you can watch at the end when this is over. But before we get to that, did you know that the, what the most common error is in accounting? Hold on to your hats. It's data entry errors. And one of those places where it happens frequently to the detriment of the accuracy of, Bennett, of balance sheets or income statements is in the GL coding, the general ledger coding. And it's really hard to find those errors. We think GL coding is so important. We did a separate video on that topic, which you can watch right now using the link that has appeared on your YouTube screen if you're watching on YouTube and is in the description. Good luck.